Sheryl Sandberg, certainly a force to be reckoned with in Silicon Valley. She, of course, the chief operating officer over at Facebook. She's also the noted author of Lean In, where she advises women on how to navigate gender inequalities in business while maintaining a work-life balance. But now Sandberg says she's rethinking some of the ideas that she shared in her book. Sandberg's husband, David Goldberg, died suddenly a little more than a year ago. And on Mother's Day this year, she posted a letter about how her role of mother and executive has shifted since. She wrote, before, I did not quite get it. I did not really get how hard it is to succeed at work when you are overwhelmed at home. I did not understand how often I would look at my son's or daughter's crying face and not know how to stop the tears. She added, in Lean In, I emphasized how critical a loving and supportive partner can be for women both professionally and personally. Some people felt that I did not spend enough time writing about the difficulties women face when they have an unsupportive partner or no partner at all. They were right. And much like her book did, Sandberg's Mother's Day Post, the portions of it Mike just read, has reignited a public debate about women in the workplace and how female employees balance their home and work lives and the barriers that they face. And today in the 4x4, we look at the impact of Sandberg's letter in the discussion about women in the workplace. Myra Strober joining us mm -hmm. via Skype. She is Professor Emerita at Stanford University and the author of Sharing Her Work, her new memoir, just published about her experiences as a woman. Yeah, hi there, Myra. We're going to get to you in just a moment. But joining us right here on set is Rachel Taylor. She is Vice President of Operations at Rokana, a tech company with a focus on creating a work environment that breaks down potential barriers for employees. And so, Rachel, I want to start with you. What do you make of Sandberg's post? I mean, obviously, she's had this dramatic shift in her personal life. I think it is a great sentiment, and mm -hmm. I think it really helps um, connect with some people that may have been disenfranchised by her book and some of the advice she gave that all women need to do is lean in, mm -hmm. and somehow uh, you could be the next COO of a, a massively successful billion, multi-billion dollar company. Um, I think it addresses the emotional impact that losing a spouse can have. But I, I think she still hasn't quite connected with the financial impact that losing a spouse can have when you're not, again, the COO of Facebook. Sure, sure. What about, uh, I want to talk about working mothers, Rachel, real quick, and uh, women who work that do not have children. Because it, personally, in my experience, my mother raised four of us. Uh, my dad died when I was three. Sure. By the time I was in grade school, she was forced to, to work into retail. And I remember her talking about how she felt as a widow, she was looked down upon that she couldn't climb the ladder in this particular company that I won't name. Uh, and that was 30 years ago. So my question to you is, does that specific stereotype exist regarding disadvantaged women? Absolutely. And in fact, the research shows that as soon as a woman has a child, the impression is that she will be less engaged at work, where men are assumed they will be more engaged at work, right? So there's immediately a bias there that the woman, now that she has a child, is not that committed to work. And that doesn't change whether she has a spouse or a significant other or someone else contributing income. That bias still exists societally. Hey, Myra, I want to bring you in kind of on the, on the back end of that question. Uh, why do you think, uh, or first let me ask you, do you also believe that that stereotype still exists in regards to disadvantaged women, specifically, I guess in my case, widows uh, in the workplace? Well, I would agree that it doesn't matter whether you're a widow or a mom, a uh, single mom, or a part of a two-career family. If you are a mom, you face a mommy penalty. And uh, if you are uh, in the workforce as a woman and you have no children, you are likely to earn just about what uh, your male counterparts earn. So the discrimination is against mothers. So, Myra, how do, how do we change that? Well, for one thing, we have to recognize that mothers are in the workforce to stay, <laughs> that the majority of uh, mothers are in the workforce, 70% uh, as of 2015. And uh, the idea that they're going back home because we don't treat them well simply is unrealistic. We need child care. We need a child care system. We need uh, paid maternity and paternity care. And we also need employers who are a lot more flexible about uh, working parents, mothers and fathers, than they are now. 
Yeah, um, I guess Rachel, I want to ask you. So what, what Cheryl talked about in her post was that she wishes, she calls upon a broader understanding of what a family uh, is and what a family looks like and how they should be embraced in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, you were talking to me a little bit about your personal experience. Uh, is that something that you encountered? I think that, well, I think it's less about the family and I think it's more about understanding and valuing people regardless of their age, their race, their orientation, whether they're married or not, whether they have children or not. None of those factors should come into play when you are treating people within a workplace with equality, right? Mm -hmm. None of that matters, right? It's about what do I show up and what do I contribute to the company? What's my impact? And the rest of it is personal, right? And should not actually even factor in. I think Cheryl's point though was that if there is this broader understanding that there are, you know, all sorts of families out there, all yes, sorts right. of different people that work, then we all become more compassionate whether we're employers or employees, right? Myra, what do you think? What do you think was Cheryl Sandberg's actual goal and do you think she achieved it in this post? Yes, I think she pointed out the particular difficulties that single moms have. And since such a large percentage of children, 30% now, are being raised by single moms, this is a very important addition to her work. But I've just completed a memoir called Sharing the Work, in which I detail the discrimination that I faced uh, at Berkeley and at Stanford University. And my students now tell me that much of that has not changed that it's less blatant than it was when I was starting out, but that the discrimination, particularly against mothers, um, is still very alive. And I have men in my class who very much want to be active fathers, mm. and they're not having much success with that either. So, a so lot of there needs to be a new recognition that parents, men and women, um, would like to be able to raise their children in addition to supporting their families. Conver conversation is good, yep. but action is, is a lot better. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Rachel Taylor, Myra Strober, thank you both thank you. for joining us. I appreciate it for the conversation.